Hey you guys, it's Tanya, and I want to share with you today this cute little project that I made. These are butterflies that are on paper clips. Uh, they're super fun and super quick to make. Um, and you can use any color you want. I'm just going to use the reddish orangish tones today. So to get started, um, I started out with one of these little wood veneer pieces and a lot of companies are making them now you can get them from you know several sources so just look around this particular one came from recollections uh, these are the wooden butterflies um, I think the birds would be really cute done like this that Studio Calico has and the word talk bubbles would be fun too so to get started I am going to use Tattered Angels products today I'm going to use the glam and this color is Twinkle Toes and it has a really nice opalescent color and the glam has a uh, chunky glitter in it so we're going to use that and then I'm also going to use in the glam, I'm going to use a stiletto, which has this, uh, you know, nice chunky silver glitter in it, but it's a black undertone. And then I'm going to use rosy. Uh, this is the Simply Sheer Plain Jane from Tattered Angels. And this, this is, uh, the Plain Janes are the ones with no shimmer in them. So it's just color. And then I'm going to use Glimmer Mist and Taffy. And again, you can substitute out whatever colors you have. Uh, anything will work here, but I'm going to use, uh, this is another Glimmer Mist. This is a limited edition color, but it's Jack-O-Lantern. And it's kind of got an orangish tone with a gold glimmer in it. And I'm also going to use a little bit of alcohol ink. And I'm going to use, and that color on that is caramel. I'm going to use a couple of Sharpies in gold and black and a paintbrush that is relatively inexpensive and you may want to have a baby wipe handy and then I'm also going to use the stamp from uh, Stamp Abilities it's a script stamp any stamp would work as long as it had some kind of writing or something on it definitions would be really good but this one is called faded text background and then of course I'm going to use some uh, crackle distress paint and I'm also going to use some coffee archival ink so those are the supplies that you'll need for this tutorial and I'm going to start out with my butterfly and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can really get a bird's eye view of what I'm working on here so I'm going to start out with my butterfly and there's no prepping involved but I am going to take my glams and I'm going to shake them up off camera so you don't get dizzy you want to get all of that opalescent off the bottom because you really want to use it. Then I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to lightly trace around the edges of my butterfly. And it's going to kind of wick a little bit into the uh, wood, but that's okay. Now the glam has a little bit of a glaze in it, which causes a resist. It's not going to completely resist the other colors, but it is going to resist some, which is going to give us a, a nice shading because as you know with wood, it is a wick, basically. It is going to, um, you know, just pull in color. Now I want to wipe off my paintbrush really good here because the glaze that's on here will ruin your brush then close your close your medium up so you don't spill it everywhere now I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to heat that really fast and it's not going to take long to heat it but I do want it to be good and solid because when this glaze hardens it resists so I really want to make sure that I have a really good coverage here and that it's nice and solid. Also, the, cold, the closer you hold your heat gun to this glaze, it will start to bubble and crackle. I like that effect because it gives texture, but if you don't, you may want to come back off of it just a little bit and not heat it so close. Now that's, that's good enough. It's, it's actually when you touch it, you can tell it's really dry. Okay, so I'm going to use the Glimmer. Uh, this is the Toffee. And again, shake your mediums up really good. I think you swirl Glimmer Mist, I think is what I've heard before, but I, I'm a rebel. I just shake them. Okay, and I'm just gonna add a light bit of color. And, and this step may not be completely necessary, but to me, this adds all of that glitz and glamor. 
and it goes ahead um, wood is like a sponge and it starts to soak up moisture but it will only soak up so much moisture and then it'll stop so basically this base coat is going to help that to not so much soak up you know all at one time so now I'm going to use my Simply Sheer, which this color again is rosy, and I'm just going to spray it on my mat. And I'm also going to spray down a little bit of my jack-o'-lantern. Again, shake it up because I want that gold glimmer on my butterfly. And I'm just going to place it right here on my mat as well. It's kind of off camera, but it's on the mat. Now I'm going to pick up some of the red, which was the Simply Sheer Rosy. And I'm going to start in the center of my butterfly, and it's going to start to wick, and that's fine. Pull out, because this is going to give my first dark layer of color. And I'm just flicking out like that. And I'm going up the side of my butterfly, because I want to add some shading. And I'm going to let that dry. Wiping off my brush. I'm going to hit it with the heat tool for just a second. It's going to start to puddle, and that's fine. It may mix completely, but that's okay, because these are translucent mediums, which means the more layers I add, the darker and richer the tone becomes. And as you can see when I pull back, you can see where that medium was, um, where I placed the twinkle toes. You can see it resisting the color from the rosy. Now, it's not completely dry. And that's fine. I'm just going to kind of dab it just a little bit to get some of that excess off. And I'm going to come back in with the same color, the same rosy. And this time I'm going to go over one more time. Again, because it's translucent, it is going to just apply additional color, which is going to give it depth. And I'm kind of building out my wings here, the separation of my wings. It's not going to be a huge amount of detail, but it is going to be enough to show that there are different stages of color in this butterfly. And again, I want to heat it. And I'm using the Ranger heat tool if anyone's interested in that. Okay, now I'm gonna take my uh, jack-o'-lantern color and all of these areas that didn't get color from the red I'm gonna add the jack-o'-lantern even though I know that the glaze is gonna resist it's gonna pick up a little bit of color and that's fine but that's gonna bring my orange tones are gonna blend with those red tones and give this give this butterfly a little more definition and where that resists honestly um, it's not gonna be as bright when it dries so I'm going to let that sit for just a second, soak into that wood, come back around here. And again, because I started out with my red layer, even though I go over the whole thing with the orange, what's going to happen is the red area is going to be a lot more intense than the edges where I did not apply any red before. And if I lift, you can see where that, you can see where that is starting to resist. So I'm going to put that back and then I'm just going to heat it up really fast. Okay, so let's heat that up. We're almost done. So once this is dry and we're happy with the look, and again, keep adding color, go with darker tones, go with lighter tones. Um, ranges of color are really good, but just make sure that they match. Um, you know, you don't want any uh, contrasting colors that really do not complement a natural butterfly to me. Now you can see, I'm going to hold this up to the camera so you can really see it. Where that glaze was, you can see where it's starting to bubble. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but you can really start to see it starting to bubble. And that's good because that's giving us a little bit of texture. Now the next step is I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to add some archival ink. I'm using the coffee color because I like the browns. I don't want the text to be like the first thing I notice when I look at the butterfly. I just want it to be depth. If you want the text to be a little more pronounced, you may want to go with a darker color like black. 
but I like the fact that it's subtle because to me that gives you something to look at. Every time you come to this butterfly, you're going to see something different. And that's what layering is all about. So I'm just going to press that into the stamp and pull it off. And here's our text on our butterfly. And I love how this butterfly is looking a little bit like wood. Um, you know, it, we started out with wood, so it, it's natural that it would, but um, I love the colors of this. It's so rich. Now I'm going to clean up the glimmer off of my desk because this next step is going to get a little messy. I'm going to take the black stiletto, shake it up really good. I'm going to apply a little bit of paint to my paintbrush. So I've got just a little bit of this paint in my paintbrush and it's like an inkwell and you could use ink if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to go past the butterfly like this with my finger because for some reason it flicks backwards and I'm going to tap and I'm just going to keep moving my finger around tapping that brush and it's dropping little spots. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's dropping little spots on my butterfly. So he now is a little spotted turning my paintbrush too because there's always liquid on the other side. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, I'm going to clean my brush really fast because this glaze will ruin your brushes. That's why I use disposable brushes. And I'm going to close my glam up so I don't end up getting it everywhere. And I'm going to put that to the side. Now the next step, I want to have this good and dry again. You know, I hate to run this heat tool on the camera but I want you guys to understand that it has to be good and dry okay so now my my butterfly is dry and this is what he looks like at the moment so sparkly, so fun. Love it, love it. Okay, so now the next step is I'm going to take some crackle paint. And this is the Distress Crackle Paint from Tim Ranger. It's the rock candy color. It's very clear. Shake it up really good. And I have a lot of people tell me that they don't know how, they, they can't get this to set. Well, it's pretty picky. The thinner you put it on, the more the, the smaller the cracks will be. The thinner or the thicker you put it on, the bigger the cracks will be. But the trick to this is to put it on and leave it alone. Walk away from it, go to the bathroom, do whatever you got to do, but do not try to heat this. Don't get impatient and heat this with the heat tool because it won't crackle properly. And then just take your, your sponge and wipe it off on your mat so that you don't contaminate the rest of it. I'm going to pick it up and look at it in the light to see if I have full coverage and I don't. It looks like I'm missing a little spot right here. And you're just going to slop it on. Now I've already done one of these and had it dry so that I could go on to the next step. So I'm going to put this one to the side and let it start doing its thing. Then I'm going to take, let me get this cleaned up really good because I don't want to contaminate anything else. The next step is I have these metal paper clips and they were regular standard office supply paper clips. So I just took some, I've already done these. I don't have one that's not already done, but I just put a little bit of alcohol ink on an applicator sponge and then just dotted it on and then colored these this brassy color. Now I'm going to go to the one that I have dry already and here here he is right here he's already dry the crackle paint has already dried on it now this crackle paint will only take about an hour to dry but here he is right here it's already dry so the next step I want to do is I really want to bring forth all of that crackle so I'm going to take my archival ink and I'm going to put a little bit on a sponge an applicator sponge and I'm going to rub it in to those crackled crevices really good. Just brush it. Um, you could use distress ink on this. Uh, the, you know, it probably would be better because you could wipe it off the top and that would only be in the cracks. 
with the archival ink it's going to kind of sit on top a little bit which is fine with me because it offers a little bit of shading and it kind of increases the vibrance of the color and I don't know if you guys can see it or not let me pull the <clears throat> you're just going to kind of work it in in a circular motion and now you can really start to see those cracks pop up um, turn it to the side maybe you guys can see it okay so the next detail is we need to add the center of our butterfly but I'm gonna add actually let's I like to add a little touch of gold I'm gonna come around the edges of my butterfly here and just trace around the edges with the gold So fun. These are so pretty. And they would be really pretty too if you wanted to, after you put the paper clip on the back, if you wanted to add a magnet and put them on the refrigerator, then they would serve as these cute little clips on your refrigerator. Also, I'm going to kind of come around the edges with this gold pen. This is the gold Sharpie. You could use the copper one too. They have some really nice colors of Sharpies now. Uh, but I just think this adds a nice clean edge to this. Um, and it, it kind of makes it look a little gilded. Okay, so now once I've got all of this added and my, my butterfly is the way I want it, I'm just going to kind of rub a little bit into that. If I take a little bit of that gold and I put it on my finger, I can kind of rub it into those crevices a little bit and that will add to it too. So cute. Little touch, little teeny tiny touch. Then I'm going to take my black Sharpie and just draw the center of my butterfly. You could go one step further and add some little um, antenna if you would like, but I don't feel it's necessary. And then I'm just going to very lightly touch where this top wing would kind of come over a little bit. I'm going to just slightly touch in this area. I don't want complete coverage. I'm kind of skipping it along. Now for the clip. Today, for the purposes of video, I am going to adhere these down with hot glue. However, when you're doing these at home, you could put them down with hot glue and then go back over the top of them with a little glossy accents because hot glue does not stick to metal well and it doesn't stick to wood well, but it will hold your clip in place while the glossy accents tries to dry. So I'm just gonna put a spot of glue there, put my paper clip down, and then maybe come back with my glossy accents and add some of that to the to the top so that it has time to the you know the hot glue will keep it in place until it is completely formed and that's going to give it a really nice permanent um bond so anyway thank you guys for watching i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial um, I look forward to your comments. Thank you so much. You've all been so sweet to me lately. And here's our little butterfly. Isn't he cute? Thanks for watching.